Everybody, happy Friday. This is the Flow Track Podcast. I am Kevin. He is Gordon. The email address flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. You can write in questions, comments. If you want to participate in Guess My PR, put that in the subject line. Internet coach, you can put that in the subject line as well. We're going to do some Guess My PR at the end of the show today, Gordon. I went through, there's just overwhelming demand to have people guess the PR. So I'm going to actually throw them to you this time. We're going to do a little twist on our normal segment. And that way I can just make weird facial expressions while you're guessing. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, uh, we'll see how I do. I think I'm, without the influence of you kind of skewing my mm-hmm. thoughts, I think I might be more accurate. So I'm kind of, I think it's better I go solo. I was going to say you'd be less accurate, but all right. All right. That's good. Uh, update <laughs> from the chat. Someone asks, do you still have a job? I do. Still here. Or I'm doing this on my own volition. But yeah, I'm still Yeah, here. he just, he went rogue. <laughs> Caught his mic. He's there. All right. Gordon's here. That's exciting. Uh, Paris Diamond League is coming up in, let's see, as 23 hours, according to that countdown on the Diamond League site. Talk about that. As I mentioned, we'll do Guess My PR. Talk about some coaching changes in the NCAA. Maybe touch on some mid-distance, high-profile mid-distance athletes who won't be competing for the rest of the season. I'm still looking for Calabar merch, by the way. I was Googling yesterday. Uh, The Lions? I believe they're the Lions. Um, I don't know what's real and what's fake out there. Because I feel like there's a lot of opportunistic merchandise out there and calabar is pretty high profile of a school so i you don't want to like counterfeit I just, calabar i just want something that is it doesn't you know doesn't need to be super authentic but i just i don't want the logo to be fake you, you know like when oblique seville wins gold and they cut to me in the crowd and i'm holding up the shirt i don't want people like ooh, what is that that's that's not the right logo like so some of those letters are in the wrong order that's that's a real generic cutout uh, hand-me-down type of uh, type of logo. I'm still looking. I don't. It'd be kind of weird if a high school has like a gift shop with like gear. It, it might be harder to find than you think, right? The, the fake stuff. Have the real, like no, I found stuff. That, that well, no, I see. I found stuff, which is what made me nervous. I was like, oh, is okay. there just these? Are there these sites out there that just mass produce? a bunch of high school stuff with generic logos on it. You know, the whole like property of Williams high, you know, that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff in, in the same font that you always see very generic. That's what I'm worried about getting into. And I, I don't, I don't want that. I should have done this during pen relays is what I should have yeah. done. I should have had the foresight to really dig into this during pen relays and just tried to try to buy something there. But, or you should have just like walked into the paddock when the race was going on and be like, Ooh, what's this? Oh, <laughs> no. okay. And walk away with it. That's called theft, Gordon, which uh, okay, we do not condone true. on is, the is... pod. Um, all right. Anything else you want to say before we start? We did the Oslo recap yesterday. So if you're here for Oslo stuff, go back an episode. We covered it all because there wasn't much. Oslo was half a diamond league. The other half is Paris. It's like when you had the friendship pendants, or the true love pendants in, in high school, one half the heart, the other half the heart, and then they connect together. That's that's how Oslo and Paris are functioning. You had one of those, Gordon. Stop laughing. You definitely I had did one not have one of those. You def I've seen some photos of you. You played guitar. You were uh very emo. Cole I was had named one. it Trace. Yeah. I was a romantic. <laughs> what do you I had long hair? It was good, you know. All right. I never played the Paris. guitar on the quad though. I'll tell you that. I never played the guitar on the quad in college. I kept the guitar in the room. Mm. In high school? I guess there's no, you don't really play no, guitar. No, in college. In high yeah, school, no, I, I'm saying, did you... no, I never brought my guitar. Bringing your guitar, we need to talk about track. We're, this is this podcast is going off the rails. This, this Gordon's a wonder oh. woman party guy. To the Paris Yeah, I think Let's we... talk about. Hold on, did we touch on something here? Because Gordon's no, no, literally no, no, never no. said the we... words, we need to talk about track. You're Mr. Digression. And now all of a yeah. sudden, uh, you're getting well, pretty defensive. Five minutes. Right? Let's, let's get right into the topics. All right. Do you, think Gordon, Price. do you think Gordon's a quad guitar guy? One for yes, two for no. All right, go ahead. Shelly and Fraser Price, women's hundred. I'm excited. Wish we would have had at least her at Oslo, but we don't. We have her here in Paris going up against, you know, 
some like you know tier B plus runners. You know, you get Michelle Lee Ai, uh, Talu. You have um, Swambo Soboda from Poland, the mm-hmm. sixty meter star. So there will be a little bit of a field to kind of push Shelly, but off, off, ultimately we're going to be looking at Shelly versus the clock. She's already run a quick hundred mm. this season. Question is, will she improve on her, her 10, six, seven that she ran back in early May? Mm-hmm. You know, this is her last race before the Jamaican trials. She may, the more I was thinking about it, she's the 2019 champ, right? Yeah, is she going to run Jamaican trials? So maybe this the reason why she's in this is because maybe she's going to skip the Jamaican trials. Do you think that is in the cards? So she could do it. She could do it just as a run through. And then she could do the 200 to qualify in the 200. She's always been more of a 100 runner. It wouldn't surprise me. I, I want to see it, though. I want to see her mm-hmm. in... Trika Jackson and Elaine Thompson hurrah because we pull, let's pull up those diamond like Diamond League champions. What is it? Um Mbomo was the two hundred champion, right? Yeah, well you don't get both buys. So Shelly Ann has the hundred meter buy. I know um, who has the two hundred buy is my question. The two hundred meter champion? From twenty nineteen? Yeah. Isn't it uh No. 2021, who's the Diamond League champion? I got it right here. It is... Mboma. Okay. Oh, right, great. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. All right, and then D- Dean Asher-Smith. Okay, so everybody needs to run the two. They only get, yes. They're only getting three spots in the two. All right. So... Correct. I would love it if she ran. Being in Paris on a Saturday when the meet starts the next week, not the best sign that you're going to run, but maybe. What do you think? I want, what would I rather see her in? This is weird. I almost would rather not see her in the Diamond League in, against this field if I could see her in the Jamaican Championships. Yeah. I'm in a weird spot I mean, here. I think everyone is like that, right? Um, these two Diamond Leagues are weird because they're so close to the national championships, notably America and Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, if she goes into Diamond League and no runs like ten six, I'll take that over a matchup with Elaine Thompson. Hurrah! When I know I'm mm-hmm. at least going to see it, at least I'll at least see it at Worlds. But at the end of the day, it would be cooler if Shelly Ann focused would would run Jamaican trials. But I get I get it. She doesn't need to. She's been through how many Jamaican trials has she gone to in her? Lifetime, probably like all of them. I mean, all of them, like so many. So I'm not going to hold it against her if she just doesn't do one at her late stages of her career. So, but at the end of the day, we will at least see her yeah. once, which will be here tomorrow at the Paris Time. Yeah. My thinking is it's not just, oh, I want to see her compete for a spot on the team in the 200. It's just, I just want to see her compete against Jackson and Thompson her as much as possible. And this is an opportunity to see that. It's just a yeah. great, great opportunity for a race. If she doesn't run the two, Thompson Hara hasn't seemed overjoyed about the prospect at the two in a couple of interviews I saw. It's just like, she was never saying, oh yeah, I'm for sure going to double. There's a possibility that a lot of space opens up in that 200. I mean, Jackson obviously is, is legit. I know we've talked about this before, but there's a possibility of um, some medals being available that maybe weren't last year. And uh, Mboma, we haven't heard from her after the injury. So that, that event's changed a bunch. But Shelly Ann on the track in Paris. It's exciting. Right. Here we go. That's Prediction. Hurdles. Over under 10-8-0. Under, barely. Ooh. And she runs 10-7? I usually go over on these things, at least recently. Yeah, 10-7 high. I'm going to go under as well. I think, why not? I'm going with the weather being okay. Going with the under. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have Mansai Hurdles. Again, another opportunity for Devin Allen here. This field is a little bit better than the one 
in Oslo. You got Pascal Martin on the guard running at home and some other potential finalists for the world championships this year. Um, what do you think? What, what, what do you like? Do you want to set another line for Allen? We got the bad weather in Oslo, but you got a 12 8 and then a 13 2. Does he settle somewhere in between, do you think? What I think I think is I think it's incredible how much we've talked about Devin Allen in the past like seven days. I feel like Devin Allen has never been though. talked about more. Going back to the uh, Eagles. I know. I mean, at the Eagles stuff and all that, but like, it feels like now every podcast is a Devin Allen segment podcast. Yeah. How do you, you know, feel about Because obviously that? you have the 1284, then he's going back and running again, then we're recapping it, and now we're previewing him again. We're going to talk about Devin Allen again tomorrow. This is a lot of Devin Allen going on. And well, I, this, this is the argument for why really good athletes should run a bunch because and people will talk about you a lot. That's true. That well, is very like true. What he's, doing, what he's doing isn't that extraordinary. He's competing at the pro meets. He's competing on the circuit. It's not as if he's going simple. out and making viral videos racing people down the middle of Fifth Avenue. Like he's, just, he's competing on the schedule like in accordance – you know, with how people should be running. But for track, it's, whoa, Devin Allen, is he racing too much? Yeah. I'm not going to put a line on him. I'm, I'm going to uh, pass the no buck line. on. No line. There's not enough action. It. Not enough action. 13-1. Sure there 13, is. 13-1? 13-1. Okay, 13, yeah, I'll take zero. the under. I think he wants 13-08. I think the weather will be better. Colt. What weatherman Colt? Can you look up Paris weather for tomorrow? I think stadiums should should uh, keep some of that wind out. Wait, what? Is that right? There, hundred degrees. Yeah, it's hot. Right. Oh my! How goodness. can that not be right? It gets hot in places. This is true. I don't know. A hundred. All right. What's that say for Saturday though? Yeah, I have one hundred degrees on Saturday. Yeah. Ooh, okay. It's gonna be hot. All right. Any wind, nine miles an hour. I need to check out the stadium orientation to figure out which way it's blowing. But yeah, I'll go. I'll go faster than Oslo, not as fast as New York. That's what I think. And again, since this is a pretty solid, not spectacular, but solid field, I think if he's in another comfortable win, it's another another good sign for Mister Allen. Any other thoughts on this one? Nope. No thoughts. Zero. Zero thoughts for Thoughtless. Gordon. Let's go two more two more events I want to talk about with Paris women's four hundred Shawnee Miller Weibo in this race she has a season best sub fifty only a few women have done that this year obviously she's run forty eight in the past I think her best competition is going to come from Kazmarek of Poland she's the one who beat Felix in that race when Felix ran pretty well Kazmarek's legit potential finalist this year. But Miller Weibo's 200 was just, it was so-so. Like she wasn't in that mix. That was all about Shrika Jackson. And then after Shrika Jackson, it was Thompson Hurrah and Asher Smith battling for second. Yeah, I'm interested to see where Miller Weibo's at. Because I, I don't think it's going to take just the way the women's four has been this year. Polino's been solid. But Miller Weibo doesn't need to be as good as she was last year to win. She had such a big advantage going into the year. And no one has really clearly been like, okay, this this person has a possibility of running sub forty nine. I mean, Paulino with the be the one exception just because she's silver medalist and she's been so solid. But I think Miller Wave was still in a good spot as long as she's anywhere near where she was last year. I just don't know where she is though. Yeah, I mean, we have to assume she's somewhere good because you don't wake up and just drop a sub fifty casually. You have yeah. to be fit to do that, and she did that back in April. So. I think she's the overwhelming favorite um, at the world level. I mean, Polino is the closest to her, but the rest of the top 400 meter runners in the world, they're all like college kids. And the experience of going through the rounds of the 400 at the international level, is like very different from, you know, your typical yeah. college meet. So I'm willing to look at, you know, she's probably gonna go out there, run low 50. I think she'll run like 50 flat under 50.2 or something like that. And she's going to just be still cruising along to uh, what looks like a potential another gold medal in the 400. 
and then eventually she's gonna move on from the 400 she said yep get, get that heptathlon going i still can't believe that that's still so crazy to me what if she's just lying to us what if she's just like i'm gonna she's talking to her husband she's like i'm just gonna tell him i'm gonna do the heptathlete heptathlon <laughs> just keep then keep showing up for the 400 yeah. i just if you had told me hey just specific you know take the names out just generic athlete and this is their accomplishments are they either going to a switch to the multi events or b retire like, i think they might just find to retire like, yeah. multi events are hard that's really freaking hard um we actually got an email from someone who uh they had, had heard us talking about uh anna hall's heptathlon and four hurdle double and they wrote in carson warholm's er early days when he was at the 2015 u20s he won silver in both the open 400 and the decathlon um and the, his schedule was day one 400 heats day two 400 semifinals day three 400 finals and decathlon day one and then the day after that was decathlon day two so and maybe she'll do anna hall maybe it'll yeah. be like a there'll be a slow transition to it or Carson Warholm. Maybe it won't just be from one to the other. Maybe there'll be a, a little bit of overlap. Uh, as we've seen, it is it is somewhat possible, at least at the NCAA level or European U20s. But yeah, I mean, I would like her to drop something big here. I'll yeah, I think we're not going to get something too big. I think it's going to be 50 low. Mm -hmm. Just still good, but I don't think we're going to get something too big. Yeah. All right, checking on the chat here before we move on. All in the game says, yeah, she started out in the heptathlon, wants to win a gold medal. I get it, but a lot of people start out in one thing, and then they move on, and then they leave that in the past because you're, you're, just, you're really good at the other thing. And the other thing is uh, one Jenny thing Simpson. versus seven things. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. You move, you move past it. Um, all right. Men's eight. Men's eight. It's time. Men's eight. This is it. This is it. This We're is our for real moment. This, this is the moment. We're for real. This time we mean it. This time, it's like the it's eighth personal. sequel. This time it's personal. Yeah. yeah. Amos, Bull, Boss. I'm reading all the names because any of them can win. Dobek, Giles, Giles, excuse me. Uh, Guaned, Kramer, Robert, Sierra Draskel, Qual, Tuca, Van Diepen. There it is. Gentlemen, your destiny awaits you. Who will be the next? guy to run 144 and make us very confused about this event i don't think i think this is going to be one in 144 three and i'm going to be annoyed confused yeah. i'm going to be annoyed i just know it i'm not even i don't even want to react to it i just know i'm going to be annoyed from that result you know max bergen is doing good he got his gave us his, the 143 but yeah i'm just i'm not sold yet I am, yeah. I don't think that field is going to be enough to put together multiple 143s. I would love to be multiple wrong. But... Wait, 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 wait. Your expectation got raised tremendously. Multiple 143s. Yeah, we will. We need something. We need like a 143 mid and a 143 high or something. What could minute. happen in this? What could happen in this race? Don't say world record. Something some that's at least within the bounds of possibility to make you excited about the men's 800. 142. By anybody? Doesn't matter who? Yeah, by anybody. Yeah. That's all I need. All Gordon's asking for. Yeah, but before we just said world lead, and now we're just, yeah. are, are we asking too much or are we asking not enough? Are our expectations out of whack? Let's just say I'm not, I didn't return the glue that I bought at Home Depot for my stunt I plan on doing. <laughs> the world championships like i still <laughs> I still plan on packing the glue into my bag <laughs> it's under the the amount of ounce that you need to do it put it in your carry-on yeah uh, i'm i'm gonna wait up to the last moment before i make my decision on this men's 800 because right now you know, who's even gonna seeing win these diamond league fields i'm kind of like nah. who's gonna win it oh i still think mula is gonna win it no yeah, no no Jilly. this race well, this race? What's what's the most on brand for twenty twenty two in the eight hundred result here? It's a one forty five, but like who wins with a one forty five? 
Because if oh. Amos wins with the 145, then you start thinking, ooh, Amos. Amos, no, I think, all right. I think Peter Bull winning mm, or okay. Boss winning Oh, would be. Boss has, has not been able, running that fast this year, so that would be that would be a big surprise. The, home, the yeah. hometown guy winning. Yeah, I think Twall, Twall in 145. I think you could get good uh, – Good action on that. Ah, I'm excited. I'm actually yeah. excited. It's it went in a complete circle for me. I'm actually excited now when I check the results of this because I just think, what's going to happen this time? Can it get any worse? Yeah, that's yeah. true. In a weird way, as yeah. bad the men, it, it's so bad. It's it's becoming good. Well, and you're just curious who's gonna who's gonna win it because yeah. literally anybody could win it. You don't know. You have zero expectations. On that race, every time they line up, I think it's yeah. The the men's eight hundred has become a scratch off lottery ticket. It's just yeah. like it's not really that exciting. But when you, something exciting happens, hey, I won two dollars. Oh, okay. Oh, I got a free ticket. You know. Mm -hmm. So, hundred percent. All right. I think that's it for Paris, right? I mean, yeah. If something interesting happens, we'll recap it tomorrow. Yeah, you're doing a. Uh, Rapid reaction podcast. What are we calling those? Instant reaction instant, podcast? Instant reactions. What time is that at tomorrow? 3 p.m. Central. So you can tune in after Diamond League Paris. Uh, Gordon will join. If something crazy happens, you know, I'll, I might dial in. If there's a 142, you just call me. Get okay. me on the phone. I'll get you on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll report live from wherever I am uh, at that moment. We want to talk about a couple college coaching changes because we haven't had the opportunity to dig into this much. Um, Leroy Burrell is going to go to Auburn, Gordon. He was at Houston for many years, as you know, very connected with that program. Will now move to the SEC. What do you think of this decision? It was very surprising. I mean, not only has Leroy been with Houston – for a long time as a coach, but like his entire like track career is based out mm -hmm. of Houston, right? You went there in college, you trained there, you know, you, it's just like, it's all about his entire life. Track and Houston has just been everything. Um, mm -hmm. And so he's like you, the ultimate like legacy, this is my spot type coach. And so for him to leave one, I, I do think it's actually good for the sport that someone of like Leroy Burrell is willing to leave a place like Houston because it's trying to create like an uh, competition or an economy around coaches finding value, like putting more value into coaches because, you know, what's the incentive like for Houston? Like you have to create incentives. And now when mm -hmm. someone who really has no reason to leave is now willing to leave. We're now creating more incentives for coaches and the industry around track and field to be more valued. You know, the same way, the reason why you see college coaches in football and basketball going all over the place. And the reason why that's happening is because the market for those two sports is huge. And so this is good mm -hmm. for the market of track and field. I will say though, um, there was a quote from Leroy who was being interviewed and he did mention about you know, the obviously the tragic loss of his son, Cameron, and how that was kind of a, a factor in wanting to, you know, start a new journey at Auburn. Um, he mentioned, you know, when you coach your son there for five to six mm -hmm. years, it's just a lot of memories and it can be really hard, which makes sense. I mean, there's just so much reminder of that and that it can be hard to try to be a a coach and deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. He mentioned how it was hard this past year. Um, and he also mentioned Houston was great at, you know, being able to like give him everything he needed to go through yeah. this, this season in the best way possible. So uh, he was very thankful for that. But I think yeah. him recognizing that, I thought that was good. And I think he's now going to be able to bring, you know, his expertise because clearly he's one of the best. To the SEC, the SEC is going to get even better. Auburn's going to get better. We know Texas is coming 
to the SEC. Obviously, we see what Edric Floreal is doing at Texas. SEC, we thought is good. It's just getting even better. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of incredible. The SEC just finds ways to get the best of the best of the best. Um, mm-hmm. As you see what Kentucky is doing now under Lonnie. Now we're, you know, Auburn's going to have Leroy. Texas, Edric's coming in. It's just going to be, it's going to sh- pop off. Well, in Tennessee, in Tennessee, Tennessee with Dwayne Ross. I don't know if we mentioned yes. that on the pod when it happened because it was in a string of really busy shows there, but he's going from A&T to Tennessee. You had the two best non-Power 5, I don't even know if people use that term anymore, sprint programs in A&T and Houston, right? On the men's side, at least, wouldn't you say that? You know, their yeah. coaches are now going into the SEC. And I'm reminded of, I forgot it was who exactly said it a few years ago. I was talking to them, a sprint coach. And they're saying like, yeah, if you're a sprint coach, like getting to the SEC for a lot of coaches is like the realization uh, or a fulfillment, a career fulfillment. Like it's, it's, a, it's part of the journey because you want to be able to be at that highest level of competition. Um, not to say that you can't get that in other conferences because, you know, it's track. You can see them at nationals and stuff. But just the resources and what's available to you there, most coaches want to see what they can do when they have all the help, all the support, all the support. Yeah, exactly. Like everything going, you know, in your favor, like what can I do with the best of the best? And that's, that seems to be, be the draw again. You know, we were at Texas two weeks ago. Their facilities are no slouch. I mean, they're going to be in the sec, but it sounds like, Oh, big 12, you guys get no money. No, it's not how it is, but just the level of expectation and then the recruiting advantage there as well too um you know ross going to tennessee i also thought was interesting too because they hired a distance coach a high profile distance coach as well in sean carlson coming from notre dame so you know that's just a two-pronged um approach there right you get you get carlson and you get dwayne ross in one spot Thought that was interesting. Did that surprise you at all? That did surprise me. Um, Tennessee basically was wasn't playing any games. They're like, we're going all in. We're we're trying to find the best sprint coach and one of the best distance coaches. So it's like, hey, who out there is a great distance coach who's not like settled into their place? Like it's gonna be hard to pull like Mike Smith or Mark Wetmore or any of the yeah or Ed Eyestone from BYU. But like who's like been doing a good job at the distance level that's young and ready for like a promotion. And Sean Carlson at Notre Dame was the guy. They got yeah. the best distance coach that was being prepared available. to move on that was available. And so you had that plus what Dwayne Ross is doing. Um, it's a great one-two punch that if they're able to build up both of those programs, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be pretty scary or, you know, teams in the SEC and nationally. Yeah. Because if you're yeah. able to combine, like, but three yeah, good distance. distance runners with three yeah. good sprinters, that is enough to podium any given year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you look at just, I mean, look on the women's side, Arkansas women on the distance side of things, or VISA yeah. of Ole Miss. Uh, on the men's side, what was the SEC chip you had? Um, Masai, you had Garcia Romo, you had Iliad Kipsang, you had some of the best distance runners in the nation there as well, too. So they got both, I guess you could add in field events and stuff too, but they've always had that unlock as well, especially with how good George has been doing. But just it's like an all around conference. It's not just a, a sprint conference. So I think to keep up, you have to have investment across the board. So yeah, I'm interested to see how that turns out. And then with these schools moving conferences as well, that just adds to it. I mean, we talked before about um, the changes, you know, Houston going to the Big 12, BYU going to the Big 12, just how that changes those two programs and how that changes that conference as well too and the ability to recruit. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see where, if there's any other movement on the coaching side of things and just how these two 
these two big moves to the SEC change things. All right, for this next segment, I'm going to, we're not just going to talk about the, the, the guys you have and women listed on your sheet. I'm going to go through all the notable scratches, and I want you to give me your, like, immediate reaction to this person being scratched from well, USA's in specific. Introduce the segment. People can't see the doc. So introduce the segment. So <laughs> the segment is notable athletes who are scratching events at USA's. And that's the segment. I don't have a title. I need to work. I need to workshop the title oh, of the just, segment, but that's the segment. So just, okay. I just want to list people who are scratching USA's and I want you to hear your reaction, Kevin. That's all I want. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it didn't need to be a snappy title. It just needed to be an explanation because you said on the dock, and that's where you okay, people true. don't. Anyway, All right. Go. First athlete, go. I'm in. Noah Lyles scratching the men's 100. Thoughts? Not surprised. Not surprised? All in on the 200. All in on 200. Abby Steiner and Gabby Thomas scratching the women's 100. More surprised that Thomas would scratch Steiner. It makes sense due to the workload this year and the obvious. Um, strength for her is the 200. Thomas, after all the scratches, makes me a little worried. She's better in the two, obviously, but I was a little surprised with her not being in the 100. Makes me think she's just going all in, make sure everything's as ideal a setup as possible for the two. But yeah, more surprised about Thomas. Allison Felix, scratching the women's 200. She has entered in the 400. I thought you were about to say she scratches the 400 and I was about to no, no. lose my mind. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. She's always zigging when everybody else is zagging. Yeah, the 400 is her chance to make the team. Yeah. You get onto the team as long as you make the final and she's better the 400 than the 200. Obvious choice. Um, Fred Curley scratching the 400. You kind of expected that. He's a one and right. two guy now. So now He's I can update my rankings. Now. Yeah, I can move him out of the four. I mean, pretty damn good 400-meter runner, though. He's the best non-400, 400-meter runner of all time, I think. <laughs> That's great. It's a great uh, line for his Instagram handle. Uh, yeah. Donovan Brazier is scratching the 400. <laughs> That's I want to see what he does in the 800. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, he is, you know, he finished up. How many people knew he was qualified? How many people knew he was qualified? Is that just from indoors? I don't think, I don't think he was qualified. He just scratched it. Maybe oh. he just, oh. let, yeah, this is an official Okay, well, scratch. let me just, let me take this opportunity to say now I am also scratching the 400. Okay, and I am too. So is that, if you're scratching the 400, let us know in the, in the, I am too. In the comments, scratch. <laughs> Chat, are you scratching the 400? Let us know. Or oh, if you're you scratching, scratching something else. Let us know. I'm scratching. I'm scratching for sure. Cold scratch. You're scratching the, the well. discus. Tell us you're scratching yeah. the discus. Just what let us you know what you're scratching. I think we should all put out statements of what events we are scratching. That, that'll be good. <laughs> um, Get the letterhead ready. This one is not. I mean, Phyllis Francis is scratching the 400. I think she hasn't really been running much, if at all, yeah. really. So, and Shamir Little is scratching the 400, going all in on the 400 hurdles. There's that. Yep. Not too yeah, it seems, there. Seems to be what she's she's like last year I thought she might do the four, but she didn't. So it makes sense this year she wouldn't. All right. This one, Sophia Gorarian, the high school star in the eight hundred, is scratching. Scratching the eight hundred? Yeah. Mm. That's about Well, you you said it in the first part there, high school star. Yeah. So she'll have so time. Probably focus on the U20s, probably. Yeah, U U20s are at the same time. Go there, get the experience, get the win. Good for her. She's had a great season. Yeah, Sinclair Johnson is scratching the 800, but that she's all in on the 15. No surprise there. You keep you keep starting these things with someone, and I'm like, wait, are they scratching? And then you're like, no, that of <laughs> another event. Uh, Grant Fisher and Sean McGordy scratching the 1500. Oh. Okay, stop doing this. <laughs> I haven't looked at this list. This is very. You know, that's what's fun about it. I'm getting your raw yeah. reaction to these names. Yeah. Okay. Good. They scratched the 15. Good. All right. Clear up some space for other people. The more notable one here, Greg Angles, 
not entered in the 1500. We already know about Centro not running. Now Craig Engels not running. A lot, two of the most, you know, talked about 1500 meter names of the past five or so years who always were making teams or getting fourth aren't there. So what you, we, we already talked about Centro not being there, but what's your thoughts on Craig Engels not being there? Yeah, and this was an event where not that many people have the standard. Still the case, not that many people have the standard. So I thought he had a decent shot, Centro not being there. Listen, it's um, it's disappointing because you don't know at that point how many times they're going to get to go through this. He had taught like he was so disappointed after the Olympics. I remember he gave an interview, Olympic trials, where he said he was like thinking of retiring. And there was another interview where it was okay. He's back. He's went on a road trip. Or, I don't know. It was the normal Craig Engels stuff of all right. He's found it again, and he's going to go for it. But I'm looking at his Instagram here, and I, it's just an injury, right? Yeah, he just hasn't been himself. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a it, it's a bummer. I think obviously he's an entertaining figure in the sport, so you want to see him in there. But also, we've seen before where you sometimes you miss the team you're quote unquote supposed to make, and sometimes you make the team that you're supposed to miss, and you just you just never know because yeah. circumstances in track and field can go in a sometimes erratic and random pattern. But yeah, I'm reading his Instagram poster. He says, got a little beat up the season at the end of camp and missed too much training to attempt racing. Taking a couple weeks off, enjoying life and getting some solid cross training in so that I can come back and hit some home runs late in the summer. And he is holding a bat in the picture. So a baseball bat, not a bat that you'd find underneath the bridge here in Austin. So yeah, I think it's just a big, I think it's, it's, it's a bummer. Um, well, he's still, I mean, you got 23 and 24, right? For sure. So yeah. Yeah. Champion championships sure. next year. Next. All right. This is a big one. Sage Herta scratching the 1500 going all in on the 800. One, well, a wise man once told me Sage Herta is the next Kate Grace. And this is it. This is that moment. Is, She's scratching the 15 the going all in on the eight. Something Kate Grace. Yeah, you really should be the one talking about this. This is the <laughs> is this the fulfilling of the prophecy? This is final, the fulfilling of the prophecy. This is the final stage. Yeah. She's gonna get third uh, in the eight hundred and I'm gonna be like, hell yeah. Well, hold on a second here. What's the path to top three in the eight hundred? And what's the path to top three in the fifteen? Well, fifteen has Pure, uh, L L L St. Pierre, and it has Sinclair Johnson. Yeah. And then it has Christian Schweizer's in there, Corey McGee, Josette Norris, Schlofterhofen, Heather McLean, who made the Olympic team. So there's a, at least Cranny is there. So there are a lot of... She's, she's not going to run. She's not going to run. Schweizer's not going to run. Eh? Come on. 15? Sure, but they're there, you know. You, okay, no, well, St. Pierre and Johnson... I think St. Pierre and Johnson is like the same as a thing Mo and no. Ajay Wilson. No. 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 No? No, it's not. No. Um, okay. You know, not knowing her training. Like if she's equally prepared for both, I think the 1500 is an easier path than the eight. That eight is tough. Now, if she's solely been focused on eight, 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 everything's eight, then I, then I get it. You still got to put yourself in there. You can't just switch an event because this event's a little easier. But again, I just have a hard time seeing anybody displace those three. Like, I would do the dreaded three-team parlay on this race. You probably wouldn't even get that good odds. Because is there any way Mo doesn't make the team? No. No. AJ Wilson. What do we know about AJ Wilson? She's going to make the team. She comes through when it matters. And she's an amazing championship racer. And we've seen it enough this year to know she can do that. What do we know about Raven Rogers? Oh, I don't know. Her picture's on the freaking tower that's going to be outside <laughs> the stadium where she's racing. You think Raven Rogers isn't going to get a top three at Hayward? That's it's not happening. Point. You know, they, this is something, the you know, yeah, Kate Grace enjoyed challenges. Sage Herta enjoys challenges. So she's going all in on the 800. No, 
I understand. And look, if that's where your training's at, that's where your training's at. It doesn't, you, you can't switch it up. I'm not faulting her for that. I'm just saying objectively, the eight more difficult to make than the 15. All right, let's move. Next one. Alicia Monson and Joe Klecker scratching the 5Ks. All right, so this is interesting, but it makes sense given we just saw them race in Oslo yesterday yeah. and they ran incredibly well. I think it's a – well, for U.S. running in terms of sending your best people, not, not the best news, but – the five and the 10 are in some ways pretty similar, even though they're double the distance, but sometimes they turn into the same race at the world championships. So they probably figured this was their best shot. And if scratching this allowed them to go get that diamond league experience, maybe that helped a bit. Yeah. But listen, that frees up a spot for both. That's good news for, a lot of American distance runners right now. Yes. The fact that Klecker and Monson aren't there. Because it, especially Monson, I felt really good about her getting on the team. And Klecker, would prob Klecker probably would have been a favorite. So this is good news for whoever was going to be fourth. Do you have an inverse scratch? Whatever that means. St. Pierre, L, L St. Pierre is accepted in the women's 5K with no time. So not sure mm -hmm. how they're able to swing that, but she doesn't have a 5K mark, and they are accepting her into 5K. It's exciting. I'm guessing it's one of those backup plan things where if I fall yeah. in the 1500, then I'll go do it. But if she actually ran it, it'd be awesome. As you remember, last year, about three months out of the trials, four months out of the trials, he said the event to watch is going to be the women's five because you're going to have the 1,500 people moving up, the 10,000 people moving down, the way the schedule works. This is going to be so awesome. And then it all completely fell apart, and I was very disappointed because um, we didn't get this superstar clash of the titans <laughs> type of race. We had a lot of people scratch. Some people just focus on one event or the other. So I, mean, I think Perter St. Pierre is one of the best three American women in the five, so I'd love to see her in it. but. Usually these things are more like, hey, let's just enter, enter, enter both, and then we'll see what happens later. Okay, a few more here. Anna Hall scratching the women's 400 hurdles. She already is on, team, on team USA already, in the heptathlon. I qualified that about a month and a half ago. But looks like we won't see her in the 400 hurdles maybe again until next year. So that's what it feels like. She's entered in something though, right? She's entered in, where we go? Someone in the chat can help out. It's tough because she could be yeah, entered in literally in a, anything. She's entered, she's entered in 100 hurdles and the high jump. And what the long, long jump? jump. And the long jump, yeah. <laughs> so she's doing a triathlon. Yeah, so she's- Welcome yeah, she's doing to the triathlon. Anna Hall triathlon <laughs> next week. It'll be All light. Right. It'll be a light weekend for her. Only three events and then no four-meter hurdles. That's fun. Okay. Ooh, here's okay. one. That's cool. That's cool. She's here's doing. one. Hmm. You ready for this one, Kevin? Yeah. Grant Holloway. You about this one? No. What? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not scratched. He's in the. I don't know time. why I fell for that. That was a good you one. That was that a good one. one. I, well. I got you. I got you. I built that one up. Got the. I got Deception. the trust. I'm doing like a 10 minute segment with you and then boom, yeah. hit you with a rope. Uh, I do have one last one. It's a field event mm. athlete. Uh, Jen Sir is scratched in the women's pole vault. Mm. I Battery. didn't even know she was still competing. Um, yeah. I wasn't, but you know, she, she's been like the goat of women's pole vault for, you know, over a decade. Um, yeah. She, her qualifying mark was like, she, Jump 460, so that that's like you know edge of top eight in the U.S. right now. But yeah, maybe you know I didn't know she was still going. I, maybe she's going to announce a retirement after this year. I don't know. Uh, but that was the only notable field event athlete scratching that I saw. Yeah, well, and one that got a lot of headlines, and then I thought about man, we haven't 
really talked about this person since last year was Jenny Simpson scratching. You know, I, I wasn't really keeping tabs on that. And I don't know if it's because I thought, okay, she's definitely going to move on to the roads or I just thought, hey, she'll, she'll be there again. But she's made every single team since 07 up until last year. Uh, Nick Sicardi, our friend at NBC, had this stat from 2007 to 2019. Simpson finished in the top three in either the 15, 5, or steeple at all 13 U.S. championships. Wow. That's, that's a pretty crazy, crazy stat. Um, I know she was working with her community in Colorado after all the fires. Um, she was impacted by that there last year. But um, I, I hope we see her race again in some form or fashion, whether it's on the road, whether it's back on the track, but she won't be running at, at USA's. Um, but I mean, the greatest women's miler of all time. So you want to see her um, out there again, you know? Besides yeah. I mean, she did finish 10th at the trials last year. Yeah. Yeah. So I think after last year and her not running much at all this year, kind of put the writing on the wall that her incredible 13 year run was basically the doors closing on it. Mm hmm. But again, she did run on the road last year, 10 miles. So I just yeah, think she's going to, yeah, I think she's going to get out there and do another one. And I think just from the fan perspective, it'd be fun to see her out in the same way with, you know, we wanted the, we wanted the proper Felix send off. And if she is going to eventually uh, move that direction, you just want to see Simpson do it. Cause you go, you look back at Simpson's record. It's phenomenal. Like that stat is impressive, but it almost doesn't do it justice because look at how many medals she brought home. Look at how consistent she was at global championships too. It's, it's bananas for Simpson. Uh, okay. Is that it? Do you have any other ones? Those are my scratches. People in the chat right. are reacting. Uh, so Anthony Rock said, uh, no, what, no. All in the game said, Jen Sir is still competing, question mark. Then Claudette Scrawlings, though, she retired, bro. Then Rock said, Jen Sir might as well retire. So people debating on Jen Sir's status. That's what this is about. But uh, yeah. Any other interesting comments? Um, yeah. Gordon usually stays know. out of the chat. You usually stay out I'm of never the in the oh, chat. I, I, I'm always late to the chat game. I, I don't keep she, it open on my screen. It's kind of covered, so. She had vaulted I'm, I'm six lost. times this year, though. I'm looking at her yeah, results. Yeah, she's not retired. Yeah. But yeah, maybe yeah, she's yeah. just hurt, you know. So, anyway. All right, you want to do a couple Guess My PRs? Let's do it. I'm ready. We can go. How many are we oh, wait, doing? Wait, hold on a second. Three? Hold on a second. I'm going to go hold three and oh. Get your, uh, get your list up again. Khalil says you didn't mention Baker, or maybe you did. I don't know. Did Ronnie Baker scratch the 100? Uh, he didn't even enter the 100, I don't think. Hold on, let me, let me double check. Yeah, he's not even entered. So, yeah, I mean, some of the people, if they're not even entered, I didn't notice. This is all people who, like, at least entered and then scratched. So, yeah, people like Ronnie Baker, basically he's just not running at all this season, I guess. So no Baker. We saw him indoors, didn't we? Yeah, we saw him indoors. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at the 100 to see if there's anybody else. that. And Eric's in there, Bracey's in there. All right. All right, yeah, guess my PR. I'm going to throw a couple at you. Again, the email address, flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. So I'm going to guess my PR. Usually – Gordon and I both are in the in the dark about what the uh, what the PR is, but today it's just gonna be Gordon. Gordon show. Here we go. Johnny Menzel. Here we go. First one, Colt. Are you ready? <laughs> wow. Colt, what does so Colt need to be ready for? I'm Colt prepared. just woke up. I'm, I just yeah. wanted to say, Colt, we, are you ready? Did we just I'm wake a, up our uh, producer? Are you? I've been talking. I haven't had to do anything for thirty minutes. Yeah, I'm good. I'm here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Cole, earning money the easy way. All right. I'll start with a short one. Here we go. This is okay. from Judson. This is from Judson. You're going to guess his 200 PB. Ready? Okay. In the 100, 1046. In the 400, 4637. In the 300, 33.9. So I'll say Ooh. those again. 100, 1046. 400. 
4637, 300, 33.9. I'm doing quick math. We're going to do this in just a math way. I'm going to just do a straight up math problem. It's going to tell me what he runs is. He's definitely faster than that. Okay. What did uh, it say? Tell us what it said. <laughs> no, that's not his time. Okay. I got to I got to You got to say gotta it out loud. It. Okay, he probably runs. He's probably running a. I'm gonna say. Twenty-one two. Twenty-one point two. Cole, I'm gonna forward you this photo. All right, you gotta wait. Cole, are you awake? <laughs> no, I just emailed it to you because this is a cool picture. Gordon, your guess was what? 21.2. Okay, again, yeah. so it's 100 PB, 1046, 446, 37, 333.9. Gordon guesses 21.2. His actual 200 meter PB, 20.9. I should have. Throw up this photo, throw up this photo when you can, Cole. I, generous. I love this photo. Zoom in on the back. Photo. Look at the people on the right, their facial expression. Is great. They were expecting okay. a twenty-one two, and then they got a twenty point nine. That's why they're reacting yeah. that way. Like, whoa, okay, <laughs> okay. It's off by point three. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Not, not bad at all, Gordon. You're off to a decent start. Okay. Maybe this is how we should have done it before. Yeah, just let me do it. You're... Look, he's celebrating. This guy's future. This is a high school kid. Um, yes. He looks like high school, yeah. I wonder where he's going to college. That's a good recruit. Like, that's fast. <laughs> Scorpions. Like, he, he needs to, he's, we're going to see him in the SEC or wherever, yeah. Power 5 conference in like two years. We're going to be running this segment back in six years. When he's like, oh, Judson when he won gold. Like, <laughs> and at the LA Olympics would be like, the, yeah. we guess that guy's PR. <laughs> Back in yeah. 2022. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up, right. we are going to go to Taryn. We're going to go to Taryn. Um, high school junior from New Jersey. Got it. That helps difficulty, dif knowing the state. Difficulty level going up here. Uh, four. This is the first workout. Four times 750. At threshold okay. pace, grassy course with a short hill with 650 meters jog rest. All right. So four times 750 with 650 jog rest. It's a very with weird distance. <laughs> I know. I picked this one on purpose. I, I picked this one on purpose. Yeah. We got a lot of high schoolers. We got some middle schoolers riding in too. All right. The times 230, 231, 232, 229. So that's for four, 750 meters on a grassy course with a hard hill. Workout two. Two miles of 100 meters on off at 15 to 18 second on. Five minutes rest. Then a 600 and 150, 100 meter walk, 354.2, 100 meter walk, and three times 235, 35, 34. That's workout two. Workout three. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to skip that two workout. Minutes. I do not remember anything you said. It was just a lot of numbers. So, so. <laughs> Okay, what's the third one? The best, the best part of it is in the 300, he goes 54.2. And then the 200, he's just 35, 35, 34. All right. Workout three, eight times two minutes. Uh, two minutes on, 30 seconds off. The ons were at 540 to six minute pace. All right. He wants you to guess his 3200 and 1600 meter PR. Um, and there's one other one, three times. The, actually, this one might be the most helpful. Yeah, give me this. Three, three times a K. Three times a K. Three times a K with full recovery around five to six minutes. So a lot of rest there. 304, 305, and then three flat. So what's he running? 3,200. What's he running in 1,600? Hold on. Three times a K. Dude, come on. I'm going to do a quick Excel math. Okay. So that was like 448 pace for those Ks. All right. So be at full recovery. 
Okay. All right, you ready? So 1600, I'm going with 1600, I'm going with a uh, 510. And then 3200, I'm going with 1140. No, 1130. No, 1120. 510 and 1120. All right. No. I think. No, no, I'm changing again. 510 and 1110. No. Last change. 502, 1110. All right. You were way off. <laughs> I think the 4 by 750 threw you off. 445 and 1011. God dang it. Yeah. I did miscalculation on my numbers. I was thinking it was 445 and 1011. Yeah, just, just a bit outside. I think right, you said 1011. You said 1011 at some point in that list of numbers. You said 1110. Oh, I said 1110. Oh, okay. I said 1110. Yeah. Because I was thinking it was like a five minute miler, mm. but he wasn't. He was a 440 guy. Okay. All right. I this one up. from I'm Crawford. One one. Much one more one. straightforward. This one's a lot shorter. You got to pay attention to this. Ready? Okay. Five times 400 with 400 jog. 63 second average. Now, he also gives a clue in here. I could give you the clue if you want, if you feel like you need it, but he wants you to guess his 1600 and 3200. But five by 400 and he averaged 63s. So what does he run for 16 or 32? I can give you a clue. If you want, or you can guess it without the clue. And the clue is 800 PR. Do you want that? Yeah, I want the clue. I'm phone a friend. What's the clue? 200.41. So too flat. <laughs> 0.41. Yeah, uh, that 0. 0.41 is a factor. I have to calculate into my algorithm. Yeah. So too flat. If they write it, sense. I'm going to read it. So he's he's probably running four four thirty five, and I don't know what the uh, shoot eight nine four thirty five and nine forty four thirty nine. You said. 435 and 940. Again, Gordon, underestimating the audience. 1600 PB for Crawford. 424, 3200 PB. 917. 917. I, I thought maybe he, uh, he was more... I, thought, I was thinking his 800 was his best event. So that's why I was going slower and stuff. But now I know... He basically can be better in the eight than he actually is. Because mm -hmm. if you run four twenty something, you should be able to break two minutes in an eight hundred. Yeah. So that kind of threw me off. So that clue was a little bit of a rope a dope clue. If he would have said I run like one fifty six, then I would have been like, okay, he's in the four twenties. One fifty seven, mm -hmm. I would have been like four twenties. The email address, again, flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com. Subject line, guess my PR. We might, I might just, because we have so many, I might just start throwing one or two of these at the very end of every show until you get better at them. I think you need more reps. So There's going to be that one day minutes. when I get it right on the nose to the exact second or to the exact tenth for the sprinters, and I'm just going to be thrilled. It'll be worth it. It's going to be that one moment. We got to get, there. We gotta get like, to that moment. It'll be like those trick shot videos. You only yeah. see the one that goes in, but they were out there all day trying to bounce the ball six times off the roof and into the hoop. Exactly. All that matters is we have one segment where Gordon hears the workouts and then nails it. And that's it. At that point, we yeah. end the segment, right? And it's over. We yeah. just don't do it anymore. Then we retire the segment. Yeah. You can't, I've you guessed can't, it. Once we officially guess the PR... It's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, we'll have a show tomorrow. 
3 p.m. Central. Uh, tune in, subscribe. Someone asked about the subscriber podcast. We did not forget about the subscriber podcast. We did not forget about it at all. We're going to do it. Things just got crazy. So there'll be one. We might even do a bonus one when Gordon and I are in person in Eugene. So you'll get your fill of subscriber pods for, for sure. We just had a little bit of some schedule changes and things shift. So we'll definitely get the subscriber subscriber pod. Um, so if, if you want to recommend topics and stuff for those in your subscriber, not a subscriber, what is it? A member, member pod, sorry. Uh, yeah. Email, fl- email Flowtrack Podcast and then put member pod in it. Like, do you just want 30 minutes of cold? Like, that's cool. Like, we'll do that if people <laughs> want it. Just like a, a cold only. A cold, may, maybe it's not even track related. Maybe people just want to hear Colt's like story, his evolution. Maybe people want to talk about, you know, hear Gordon's trip to the eye doctor for the first time. Maybe they just want an hour of Guess My PR. Who knows? I do think we probably can do the pod during like the afternoon during when we're at USA's because the first two days kind of start later and we'll have all that time. So, because we're going to be doing the live pod after each night at yeah. USA. So we could do it maybe in the afternoon on that, on that, t- on that Thursday or Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll do it for sure. We can do both. We'll, we can do like shorter ones too. We could for, yeah. for members when we're at Worlds. Like, hey, let's just do a 20 minute quick reaction here and send it out. Um, Colt, any last words? You have weekend uh, plans, Colt? I don't. Actually, I don't. Um, stay hydrated. People are going for races on uh, Monday. Drink a lot of water. Mm-hmm. My advice. That's what I have to say. Well, it's hot everywhere. Hundred hundred degrees in Paris. Hundred degrees here in Austin. Yeah, France is getting warm. Yeah. Just, just can't can't say it enough. Make sure you stay properly hydrated. Gordon, do you have anything else? That's it. Nothing else. Excited. Be, see you guys tomorrow afternoon, three o'clock after Paris. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Uh, Download, subscribe, rate, review, Flowtrack Podcast. Tell your friends. 